When we saw you guys coming over the horizon, it was, it was like, oh God, we've been saved. It was the most amazing feeling because we honestly did not believe that we would survive another 24 hours in the current situation. We had no idea what to expect, but when we saw that big gray ship coming, it was just relief. <laughs> it was. We thought it, we had it bad during the entire trip, and then that 24 hours of being towed. <laughs> Kid you not, that was the scariest moment in the entire trip. And when we saw you guys, it was like, are we gonna be saved? <laughs> Because it's been a couple hours, and when we saw you on the horizon, we we're just like, "Yes, <laughs> you're here!" And then when we heard you, and you're like, "Seen him, seen him!" We're just like, "Can you hear us? Can you hear us?" And they're like, "Yes, we can." And we're just like, "We're being saved!" And then this you kept it. going past us, and we yeah, had to call like, your bridge and say, "Do you realize yeah. that we are in your stern starboard, and you have passed us?" And they said, "Yes, that's part of our procedure." Okay, okay, okay. We're, we're gonna make it. Because after so many times of having people turn away from us after hearing us, we're just like, please, 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 please realize that we're still here. And when it was confirmed, we're just like, okay, just check it. <laughs> uh, Eternally grateful. So, tell so me about grateful. The plan. We started in Honolulu, Hawaii on May 3rd, 2017. Yep. And we planned a roughly 18 day moderate cruise speed trip to Tahiti. Moareia and Papeete. And from there, we wanted to actually just travel around the 20,000 or so islands in the South Pacific. We expected the trip to take roughly six months because by November, you have to leave that area for yeah. hurricane season. So we knew that we would be back in Hawaii by October. Yeah. The first night. <laughs> the first night. We got into a Force 11 storm and it lasted for two nights and three days and when we were through with that we were empowered to know that we we could withstand the forces of nature the yeah. boat could withstand the forces of nature and we decided not to return back to hawaii but to continue on in our journey because we believed that everything sh quote unquote shook out and we'd be all right the spreader actually, uh, the bolt holding the spreader to the, the root collar at the mast bent. Yeah. And we realized that it was starting to shake. And about 700 miles away from Hawaii, it finally went clink. And I said, okay, we're, we're, we can probably nurse it, you know, down to the next major island in Kiribati. Yep. And we'll be able to stop there and, and seek safe haven and get up on the mast and fix it. But when we got to Kiribati, the boat was too big to get into their lagoon. So we decided to continue to travel south. We were a little, we were more than 600 miles off course at this point. So we decided to go to the Cooks. And upon entering that area we found ourselves in a 10 knot current going west with only the ability to sail at four knots going east. So we were traveling backwards and we knew that most of those islands in the upper chain are small atolls, reefs, but we decided to turn around and go back north whereupon we got into a white squall uh, and it was a pretty serious uh, around the end of May 25th. and. The storm was, had dropped copious amounts of water and it flooded the cockpit, which actually ended up flooding the ignition and the starter for the boat. So we no longer had that ability to start the motor. And we got pushed into what's called the Devil's Triangle. It is an area 160 west and about uh, zero degrees at the equator where boats go in, but they very rarely come out. And if they do, there are no people on them. And we learned that that was a, uh, a tiger shark location. And the tiger sharks figured that we had entered their living room and we were not leaving fast enough 
and they decided to let us know it was time to proceed forward. But us being the land lovers that we have been and the greenhorns in the sailing world did not understand their language. Not at all. <laughs> Ten knot current. You, before we turn. Before we turned around to come back north. Yeah. Yeah, May. Yeah, steam, still in May. When I went all night pointing east and going west and she was like, we're not going the right direction. And it wasn't until her shift, which was during the day, and she was like, we've been pointing east this entire day going west. And I was like, thank you, because I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> we had uh, two water makers and the first one failed. And yep. we put the second one in and then ended up cobbling pieces from the first one to make the second one work. And we had been told by yep. people who had sailed this route before that you could run into some serious problems. And if we thought we only needed a month of food to pack three, and we figured we might need three months of food, so we packed at least six. Uh, what yep. I thought if we judiciously spared our supplies would last a year, <laughs> and we've used 90% of them in six months. Yep. We had dry goods. Yes. We found that cans don't work. <laughs> um, so beef jerky, oatmeal, rice, pasta, uh, dried fruits, nuts, pretty much a, ve a vegan and vegetarian diet is what we survived on. Yes. We did run out of dog food and the dogs <laughs> turned out to really like human food. A lot. How do you describe the color blue to a blind man? I mean, how could you describe it to people who really, really like it? It's relief and elation and joy and utter sadness because that was our life. That was home. She built that for the last two and a half years. It was a brief boat and she made some. She made. Oh, my hair in your mouth. <laughs> what are you eating okay. on me? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> but. Oh, you were sad to see the boat go to leave it. Okay. It, like I was saying. She spent two and a half years building that boat. And everyone was laughing at her saying, oh, this is not what you do. But she knew in her head, it's like, this is mine. This is my life. People told me throughout my entire life, I couldn't do anything. Here I am. Like, she couldn't, like, nah. Okay. Don't go there. She took something that was broken and made it whole. It saved our lives multiple times throughout this whole entire trip. And the utter despair of having to leave her. So yeah, we were really relieved that you guys were here, but Nymphie was our, our baby. And um, she's strong and uh, we have the bill on and we're just hoping to get her back. The guys, uh, we, we weren't sure if we were going to get yeah. Reveille at 0600 and have to stand up and, and, and do jumping jacks and run around yeah. or, or if, if we were going to be quarantined into a tiny corner. We knew that we'd be yeah. the new kids on the block and that everybody would know who we are, yeah. but we don't know anybody else. And we don't know the rules or anything. And, and we knew that stories would fly that had nothing to do with the actual truth and that people would come up to us, you know, kind of sideways and be like, we heard you're from China. No, no, we're not no. from China. <laughs> so, um, but <laughs> you guys opened your arms and your hearts to us and gave us things like toothbrushes and soap right. and, and, and helped us figure out how to get from place to place on the boat. And you're so human and, and pure and, and clean. I mean, yeah. wow, I, I've never seen anything well, okay, okay. My, <laughs> my bathroom on the boat is as clean as yeah. this boat, but just about nothing else in the world is. Yeah. In a million years, I was joking with someone about 10 years ago, and they said, <laughs> what happens when you go out to sea and you get broken? And I said, oh, the Navy will come save me. No lie. It really happened. And then it happened, and we were just like, wow. <laughs> we saw that a jacket away. Really, we're so grateful. Humbled. Uh, the very first day, we found out that there were rumors of dogs being brought aboard. We're all super excited. Rumors were throughout the ship. 
And as soon as we finally saw the dogs, you could just see the smiles on everybody's faces. We were all super excited to play with them, give them treats, run with them. Um, we knew that there was something that was going on that day. And we heard that they were going to be picking up some individuals, that we were working on something. And as we got closer, people started to spot the dogs on the ship. So we were very excited about bringing the dogs aboard. Uh, the dogs have brought like, a sense of home to the ship. We all have dogs usually or grew up with pets and animals. So the fact that we have them here on board, it just reminds everybody of being at home. And after a long deployment, that's all we really it brings such a good sense. So everybody's been running with them, feeding them, playing with them, petting them. So it's been good for both us and the dogs. Get these dogs cleaned up. Well, we need to get the dogs cleaned up. I mean, they've been out at sea. It's good for the health. It makes sure nothing's on the ship. It's good for the dogs. They also needed it just to feel better. They needed to shed all that salt water and all that other uh, gunk that was on them. So it's definitely not an experience that everybody gets to do in their Navy career. But it does remind you as to why you joined the Navy. We joined the Navy to do something and to help other people, not just see the world or what it is. But it's, it's been great knowing that we helped these people when other people didn't. And we were able to take them in, save them, clothe them, get them back to where they need to be. They have loved it. They, uh, they don't stock any dog food on this ship. So they've had the luxury of being able to have three squares a day of whatever it is that we get to eat. And it's awesome. It went from like nearly six months of just, you know, both of us loving them. That been like over 300 people just petting them, loving them. Like asking to take them for walks. It's awesome. And they, they love it. And how are they now that they got a bath? Oh, oh. they love their bath. Clean? They know what clean is and yeah. they really enjoy it. <laughs> well, this is Zeus. He is a uh, pit bull Sharpay mix and he's a rescue and he's actually Valentine's dog. And Valentine is a rescue and he is a Visla, which is a Hungarian hunting dog. And they are best friends and I could not imagine not having them in our lives. Well, the sea nymph is their home, and since we're now on the Ashland, they have had the opportunity to get petted and loved and played with by all the different crew members while, while we've been busy trying to take care of other important business. It's been just fantastic to have, to know that other people who love dogs are getting a chance to give them love and attention and let them run and play. I think that people have been coming by and saying, wow, it's so neat to have a dog on board because it reminds me of my pet at home. Or I, get, I had a really terrible day and then one of them came up to me and started licking my hand and all of a sudden I started petting him and I felt better. And I think it's an opportunity for these two to share some love and attention. Our experience on Ashland has been mind blowing. When I first arrived, I had no idea what to expect. In fact, you guys anticipate our needs before we know we even have a need. Yeah. And that has been phenomenal. You do the same thing with the dogs. And if you could actually turn the camera, you would see all these other people <laughs> lined up, getting ready to, to play and pet them. and. <laughs>
Our time on Ashland has been amazing. I have had my expectations exceeded, especially when it comes to the boys. Yeah. Last night, we were up here walking the dogs in the dark, and all of a sudden we had two wonderful seamen come running up to us and hand us glow sticks and said, yeah. you know, put these glow sticks on the dogs. It'll make it easier for you to see. It'll make it easier for everyone else to see. And I was like, you know what? I would have never thought of something like that. <laughs> I mean, just the, the attention to detail that the Navy has with respect to foreign animals in a, in a foreign situation has yeah. been phenomenal. She's right though, like everyone here has been like open-hearted, innocent, happy, joyful, helpful, supportive, like beyond anything that we imagined. Like she said, there's things like when we were, knew you guys were heading over, we're like, okay, what do we need? And like so much stuff that just went over our head and we left and like you guys had it. Like toothbrushes and you know, towels. Deodorant. Just, like, simple things in life as well as wherever we go on the ship and we've only explored about maybe what one tenth of it Not we actually that. have people all the time saying where are you going we know you're lost well where how can we, we help you <laughs> we'll take you there don't even worry don't about, worry about, it. about so, it it's been a real comfort it's awesome tell me if you're gonna miss ashland timing on board and what's ahead of, ahead of you from now oh we're gonna miss it here the people like i told you like I've been talking to a, like oh, everybody here, and I'm like, oh, you're my new best friend. You are so awesome, so down to earth, and like the memories here, just I'm gonna keep them. I'm gonna cherish them because this, this is in the I'm top ten list. list. There is <laughs> in, in a million years, I would have never thought that I would ever be on a navy ship, a warship, much yeah. less rescued by a warship. <laughs> I mean, and this, the open arms that you guys have had for us. Yeah. We're honored to be here and we are grateful for everything you have done for us. Thank you. Thank you.